I left my self will. I left all that shit in New York. I left that shit at the airport when I when I collapsed. I came out here to save my life. I bullshitted people. I bullshitted myself for so long mm -hmm. that when I'm listening to these professionals now, I'm talking, I'm opening up. I was in therapy before, but I was just sitting there complaining about my day or, you know, how my kids were acting up or, you know, this is going on in my marriage. I wasn't ever talking about me. And then when I'm in treatment, they're like, oh, you have codependency. I'm like, no, I don't. They're like, oh, you have love sex addiction. I'm like, no, I don't. They're like, you were an alcoholic before you ever touched the substance. And I was like, and I shared that with my mom and I told her about just my very overachieving, over compulsive behavior, gotta have things my way. And when I started reading and those words, that insanity, that insanity mm -hmm. was so real. I'm like, am mm -hmm. I being punked? Was somebody like following me around, watching me? And you know, I didn't get into to trouble. I was pretty safe, but like, it just wasn't me. And I like all I can say is that the promises are absolutely real. Like I took treatment seriously. I carried a notebook every day, every group. And I told people like, yeah, I'm in California, but it's not, it was not easy. Like it was six, seven hours a day of treatment, therapy, groups, meetings. Like it was very intense, but I think that's what saved my life. And I'm not going to say just that program, but God put his hands over my life and he led me out here and I felt like right now it's my due diligence to that's why I made the decision to stay so I have not been back home I miss my family and my friends like so so much but I am so much better sober and here because I was present physically but I wasn't really there like I couldn't tell you how many mistakes I've made, how much stuff I don't remember, how many things I've said that I have no idea. Like I started drinking and becoming a whole different person. That's just not me. And it wasn't fun anymore. Like it, I don't even, I can't pinpoint that day and time, but it wasn't fun. And I was never a person that really had hangovers. I didn't really withdraw like that. So I didn't have those like, oh, I woke up with the shakes and I got a drink. Like, no, I wanted to drink. I wanted to yeah. get fucked up. And I'm like, yeah, that's how I was. To, that was part of the problem. People are like, oh, you can't stop. I'm like, I could if I wanted to, but I don't want to. I'm very headstrong. I'm very stubborn. But alcohol really like alcohol got it, man. Like, I'm just like, all right, bro, you got it. Because right. um, this this is it's, it's so crazy because when I say this hits all walks of life, it does not matter your color, your age, your education level. I've worked in the field for years. Like I have experience working in addiction treatment, rehabilitation, and I still, it still took me a long time to just be like, yo, I have a problem. Like this is not okay. And once I said that, it was like, it was freeing because I gave it to God. Like I literally, I actually just got baptized. I called my mom. I was like, have I ever been baptized? She's like, I don't think so. I'm like, I want to get baptized. I got baptized in September and you know I know that the devil comes at you harder every time you get saved whenever you get baptized and I'm not gonna say every day that I've been sober has been peaches and cream because that would be a complete lie because life right. is still really fucking lifey and right. that's the best way I can say it but my perspective like when I wake up in the morning the first thing I do is thank God that I'm sober like I remember what I did last night I don't have to ask nobody I don't have to make no phone calls I'm just, I'm present, I'm learning, I am growing, like I'm getting more into the word. And I don't know if this was God's way of telling me to sit my ass down, but he set right. me down, he laid me down, and everybody's rock bottom is different. But I don't know, I, like, I, like I keep saying, I just physically don't know that my body would have been able to hang on if I would have kept on at the pace that I was going. So I'm just blessed. I'm thankful 170 days today. I make sure I go get my chips every month. And right. one guy told me, he was like, get your chip for you, each one for your kids and your family. Yes. I said, bro, I'll be going for two weeks. So I just right. calm it down. I just get my one. But I'm just so blessed and thankful to be here. I'm, I'm happy to, you know, share. I hope that, you know, some part of what I say, you know, resonates with somebody because like, it's okay. And even in the black community, like it is okay to ask for help. It's okay to throw your hands up. I believe in God, but I also believe in science. I think God gave us science. There are people that need, you know, medications to balance out their chemicals in their brain so that they can function clearly. It's okay to talk to a stranger 
and get help and get guidance it's okay to meditate it's okay to pray it's okay to do all of that like your everybody's healing looks different and i just think it's super important that you find what works for you you find the people you find your community and if the table that you want to sit at doesn't exist fucking build it because that's what i'm right doing. i don't know right. anybody out here outside of you know interactions that i've made my closest family is literally in indiana so i am three thousand miles away and i'm out here and every single day i get up and i push and i push but i push because god is holding me up i'm not doing this by myself and i know that so my biggest suggestion is just ask for help don't let people get in your head you know what you need for you and you got to make something work for you because your life is worth it and you know we see these celebrities the money the fame none of that stuff matters like it, right. it doesn't when you go home and sit with yourself at night and you can't sit with yourself who cares if you got 10 million dollars in the bank like it doesn't fucking matter so you gotta be real with yourself you gotta get real with the issues that the resentments that you carry in yourself you gotta realize why you don't want to sit with yourself in order to move forward without uncovering all of that you're not gonna make it so I don't say that to be discouraging. I just say that to recommend that people really just take that look in the mirror. And if you are right. having a hard time looking in the right. mirror, then mm -hmm. you know it's time. Like it's time to do something different because they say the definition of insanity is doing the same thing the same over and thing over, over and over. A different, a different result. Outcome. So here I am. My life is flipped completely upside down. I have always had my kids since I was 15 years old. I'm out here by myself like I miss the fuck out of my kids but I miss my family I miss my friends I miss I miss my enemies I miss everybody like I miss it all <laughs> but you know I'm I'm doing this for me this is the first time in 20 years that I am putting me first and I had to let that guilt and that shame go and you know it hurt and I'm not gonna sit here and say I don't cry like I'm not even a crying type person sometimes I'll just feel tears and I'm like why and they're like right. it's okay to feel it's okay and i'm a person that doesn't feel anybody can tell you like i don't cry i'm like oh feelings feelings don't pay no bills we don't got time for that and i wasn't raised like that so i don't even know where that came from but you know just feeling your feelings not having to justify your existence like i'm just getting more comfortable i'm 36 36 and i'm exploring i'm learning who i am i'm trying to figure that out and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm so old, but I'm really like, at the end of the day, I'm not. Like life right. begins when it begins, when we figure that out. So like, I'm just happy to be here. Thank you for having me. And I hope that, you know, somebody gets something from my my experience and, you know, can hope, hopefully save somebody's life ultimately. Thank you for that testimony. That was great. I, I, I'm gonna just be honest with you. I love the way you just shared that with us because that is definitely, I know there is definitely somebody out there that would take something from that, would get something from that. Y'all, we gotta understand this. And I'm gonna piggyback off of what you said also. I was an alcoholic. I call myself a recovered alcoholic. And some of the same things you touched on are some of the same exact things I went through. I'm talking about I kept a job. I always kept a job. You know, I always would go to work. But like you said, at a point of time, I got so tired, Taylor. I got tired and I got, it was one big thing that really hit me. When my kids looked at me, I seen my oldest daughter look at me, look at me and just do this. And she don't even know that I seen it, but that day it hit home in me. It just, it just, just motivated me to be like, you know what, man, this bottle, this liquor, cause I, I can drink with the best of them. That's my thing. I would drink, get up, if I needed a beer. I didn't have the shakes like you saying and stuff like that. But drinking is my thing. It runs in my family. It's kind of like I'm predisposed to it anyway because it runs in my family. My dad was an alcoholic. So I'm just trying to break this trend. And that's why I created this thing. And I love the way you came in and you shared that because alcohol, like you said, it does not have any race on it. Alcohol don't have no race on it. Because when it hits you, it hits you. And we need to understand that in addiction, there is always opportunities for us to get out. We just got to choose the right one. What's up, everybody? If you would like to go watch the full length interview with Taylor, make sure you go check it out on my YouTube channel as well. Thank you for taking the time out to watch Mr. Show Out TV clips where we try to inspire and motivate those battling addiction. Make sure you get this video a thumbs up. 
and subscribe to the channel if you brand new. And also make sure you hit that notification bell and select all for all videos so you could be in the loop anytime I drop new content on my platform. Thank you guys for taking the time out to rock with me and continue to come back and join this vibe. We creating a vibe over here, everybody. So please continue to rock out with Mr. Show Out TV. We go live every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Central Time. I see y'all there, Mr. Show Out TV. Yeah. But uh, I remember hearing someone crying at like three o'clock in the morning. It was my mom and uh, I came out and I thought they were tears and uh, it was blood dripping from her face. Wow. And she was pre she was pregnant with my sister Faith, mm. and um, so he was smoke crack, beat my mom up, and there's that that's basically what I dealt with for a long time. Uh, I was like 16 years old when I got kicked out. Um, I was living in the woods, <laughs> believe it or not. Yeah, yeah. yeah let's talk about that. Talk I'm needing y'all. This is what I need from you guys to do. I need y'all to start hitting that subscribe button. I need y'all to start sharing this out here. I need this from you guys. We need to get this platform out and we need to inspire and motivate people, man. We doing this one episode at a time.